new fragrances that I really, really want to try. Ooh, this video, I'm going to show you guys some new releases that you may or may not have heard of that has not actually been released yet, but has been announced. So it's kind of like a half fragrance news and half fragrances that I just really, really want to try. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Yo, what's up guys, Tim here. Welcome back to another video today. And today, before we begin, please leave down in the comment section below one fragrance, one new 2020 fragrance that you have yet to try that you really, really want to try. Just one though, I want to see your number one pick of this year that you want to try. So let's just jump right into it. In 2020, there's been tons of releases. A lot of them I have not tried, you know, because the world's on fire, pandemic kind of thing. So yeah, there's a lot of them that I've yet been able to try and I've tried some of them, but these are the ones that I just really, really gravitate towards, whether that's because of the bottle design, the note breakdown, or just the legacy of the fragrance line in general. So the first one I want to talk about is Versace Eros. Oh, the parfum, yes, the big, big guns. You guys all know Versace, they don't release fragrances all too often. They really don't. Like the last one they released was back in 2018, Versace Eros Flame, and now Versace Eros Eau de Parfum. So the notes for this one, we have top notes of Italian lemon, Italian mandarin, Italian spearmint, I'm just kidding, it's just spearmint, and candied apple. Heart notes of geranium, clary sage, and amber max. Amber Max, what is it? I'm not, I don't even know. Probably another variation of like Amberwood or Ambroxan, something like that, but Amber Max. Base notes of Virginia Cedar, Vetiver, or per patchouli or per what is this i don't what is this or per thing sandalwood leather and vanilla i almost said italian vanilla but i think i ran that joke dry already this one actually has a lot of the same notes as the original versace arrows which leads me to think that they might be very similar this one especially in the mid and the base notes it just shares a lot of similarities and to me that rings a really big red bell is that it might be like Versace Eros Flame where in the beginning and the mid it's very different but in the dry down, way way dry down, it becomes just the same fragrance. But nevertheless, I would love to try Versace Eros Eau de Parfum. The biggest reason for me is that Versace Eros Flame, although very similar to Versace Eros in the dry down, it still pulled me so many compliments. And I'm sure Versace Eros the original pulled you guys a lot of compliments as well. This one for me, I feel like it would do the exact same thing. The candy apple note at the top intrigues me a little bit maybe the sweetness is a little bit different off top but but who knows but at the end of the day i still want to try it i know it's going to be a banger mass appealer that's just what the eros line is and if it's maybe stronger than what the original is now because the original like from what i heard this is not from my own experience from what i've heard has been reformulated and it's now weak and you shouldn't buy it now so versace arrows all the parfum if it's stronger than the original and maybe smell better smells more mass appealing hey i'm all for it and i, I would love to try it next one i want to talk about is spice bomb night vision Oh, the puff. <laughs> Damn it. Why are they releasing all the puff versions of fragrances that we just don't care about? And the same thing with Eros too, of course. Like I, I know I said I want to try it, but who wanted that? Who wanted an Eros Eau de Parfum? Like who ever asked for that? Like the same with Night Vision. Who ever asked for an Eau de Parfum Night Vision? Did it sell that much? to warrant an Eau de Parfum version. I don't know, I never saw the actual sales numbers, but it's the boringest scent in the Spice Bomb line, man. It completely detaches from what Spice Bomb is. So I don't know why they choose to make a flanker of this. So the top notes for this one, we have the very amazing grapefruit, of course, mixed with the not at all common green apple, lemon, black pepper, chili, nutmeg, clove, and get this, very innovative cardamom. Mid notes, we have rosemary, clary sage, coriander, mastic resin, lavender, and peppermint for that extra sweet Christmas mintiness. Base notes of patchouli, cedarwood, pistachio. Oh, this is the selling note right here. They're trying to rope you in. They're like, hey, it has pistachio, man. It's unique. It's new. It's innovative. It's pistachio. Frankincense, pure balsam, fir balsam, lab denim, and benzoin. So, yeah, those are all the notes. I have a 
gut feeling that it's not going to be any better than this one. <laughs> so how I came about that conclusion is that I just don't like the direction that this one went. And if that's just a stronger version, a more intense version of this, I just don't see it working because the direction is already wrong. A lot of other brands are already doing the same thing. I know they just want the money. It's gonna sell, it's mass appealing, people are gonna like it. But as a fragrance enthusiast, as someone who collects fragrance, love fragrance, like to smell something different, and I know you guys all share the same sentiment with me, is that we're not gonna pay $100 for something like this. And yes, that's what these go for, because Spice Bomb fragrances don't hit discounters that heavily. So you're gonna be paying premium for another potentially mass appealing scent. So you might be wondering, Timmy, it doesn't sound like you wanna try this one at all. And <laughs> truth be told, I do and I don't. I do because I'm a reviewer and I want them to prove me wrong. I want that pistachio note to mean something, all right? At least use it, make it prominent, make it the main star, make it different, make it unique. All hope rides on pistachio at the moment <laughs> for me. But yeah, I do wanna try it. Is, is it on the top of the list for me to try? absolutely not but it is one that I want to try nonetheless so yeah pistachio do your thing next one on the list is Le Mal Le Parfum Le Parfum so the notes for this one the breakdown is really simple they really didn't give too much away but you guys can probably kind of guess how it might smell like I guess based off the few notes that they give here the notes are cardamom lavender vanilla and woody notes. I'm kidding, you guys can't guess at all, can't you? Because <laughs> it's just so little, it's too little. Maybe the cardamom and lavender, that combination reminds me of Lana with Alum. But the vanilla and lavender, of course, is a Lamal signature. So maybe it's like a blend of something more date night, more sensual, romantic date night, like Lana with Alum and C.H. Man Privé, mixed with something a little bit more Lamal ish, like some vanilla lavender. So maybe those two type of DNA are merging in Lamal Le Parfum. That's all I can conclude from the note breakdown here. Jean Paul Coutier for me is such a weird brand because they don't have a good track record of releasing good stuff. It's just for the past few years, they just released like limited edition bottle of this, limited edition bottle of that, some other forgettable flankers along the way. It's just they don't release bangers anymore. Ever since Ultramall and Popeye Fresh, they, they just stopped. I'm excited to try this one because I do like Lanui Dalong. I like the note of cardamom a lot and I like vanilla a lot and I like the Lamau DNA the original Lamau DNA quite a bit so I do want to try this this can be good it has the potential to be good but it also has the potential to just be complete crap all at the same time this next one here guys we have one from Bulgari is Bulgari in collaboration with Alaska I'm kidding this one is Bulgari's Glacier Essence this fragrance of course belongs in the same line as Wood Essence and Wood Neroli which I like both of them I like both Wood Essence and Wood Neroli I think they're fantastic fragrances. Wood Essence is very unique, a little bit hard to wear, but very unique. I love that release. Wood Neroli is fantastic summertime, springtime Neroli scent, really mass appealing, subtle but modern at the same time. Really enjoy this one. So I have high hopes for Glacier Essence to be something that just blows me out of water. Maybe take a simple DNA, a known DNA, and just made it modern. Make it mass appealing, modern, with a little bit of a twist. Kind of like what they did with Wood Neroli here, with the Neroli note, of course. So yeah, I have high hopes for this one. So let's check out the notes. So the notes for this one, we have top notes of juniper berry, ginger, and geranium. So it's gonna be a very sparkly opening because geranium, if you guys don't know, has a minty, scratchy vibe. Juniper, if you don't know, has like a sparkly gin vibe. Ginger is just ginger, you guys all know ginger. Hard notes, we have sandalwood, lily, and artemisia. Artemisia is absence, basically, wormwood. So maybe a more like slightly bit powdery-ish mid mixed with a base notes of cedarwood, blonde woods, and musk. It's gonna go woody and powdery in my personal opinion it's gonna open up very just sparkly and it's gonna dry down to something a little bit um woody powdery ish musky and maybe this is just me speculating here they're gonna make that powdery part cooling somehow to make it give that kind of a cooling glacier feel you know what i mean maybe they make that happen I don't know how, but maybe. That would be so cool. Imagine a really brisk, icy opening with like a cooling, powdery base. 
man, it would smell like the glacier. Oh my God, I'm excited now. But yeah, I'm not gonna get my hopes up way too high. It is just a designer brand after all, and they can only do so much. Last fragrance I wanna talk about today is from Issei Miyake. And yes, it's Miyake, not Miyaki. I have my Japanese girlfriend correcting me on that one. So believe her, it's Miyake. This one is called Fusion. Dizzy. And this one, I didn't even read the notes before, so I'm about to find out the notes right now with you guys. But the reason I put it on this list is because of the bottle. I mean, dude, that looks like some futuristic alien type bottle right there. It just looks like it's from like 2050, something like that. It looks really, really dope. Fusion the Izzy. So just from the bottle alone, I actually just want to own it. I would blind buy that just because of the bottle because I want to have that in my collection because it looks dope. So the notes for this one, top notes, we have lemon coconut water, thick nectar, heart notes, we have rosemary, geranium, cardamom, eucalyptus, nutmeg. It, it, it looks so good, man. The top notes gave me so much hope. It's so different. Coconut water, thick nectar. Heart notes just kind of ruin it for me because those are all the notes that you've already smelled everywhere else. Maybe besides eucalyptus, but come on, man. We all know what eucalyptus smells like. Base notes of ambrox, which is shortened ambroxin. Salicylate, I'm not familiar with that, but probably some synthetic molecule, woods and patchouli. So yeah, it looked good there for a second note wise, but hey, I'm gonna keep an open minded. I hope it smells futuristic. I hope it's just, it blows me out of water like the bottle design did. I can't really compare this much to any other Isamiyake fragrances. So I'm just gonna leave this one at that. All right, guys, that is it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. Which one of those fragrances that I talk about that you want to try? Leave it down in the comment section below. I want to know which one you want to try the most out of the list that I mentioned here. And yes, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye.